My name is Jim Caseman. Good to have you back again. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And the way we're doing that is we're examining the scriptures from Genesis to the end of the book of Revelation and seeing how why God does things the way he does and, and trying to understand that. And that way we get to know him, how he thinks, and so we can cooperate with him fully in our walk with him. All right, we left off last time. We had talked about the course the five offerings and how Jesus would have to fulfill each of those five offerings in the Mosaic law and also the feasts of Israel and we even mentioned that we're actually even in the dead church that I was in at least we were practicing one of them and that was Passover and then later on when we got born again and filled with the spirit we were attending churches that uh, were I believed in Pentecost so there was two of the feasts right there that uh, we're already talking about all right but he would fulfill all seven of them all seven of them and remember, there was three groups, and the first was uh, Passover, and there was three feasts there, and that was uh, uh, had to do with peace, and then the next one, Pentecost all by itself, had to do with power, and then the next one was the Feast of Tabernacles. That included three more, so now we've got seven feasts, and the last one, Tabernacles, had to do with our resting in God. So peace, power, and resting, and the, uh, the feasts were divided into three groups. All right, now, we're going to talk about uh, one of them, and that had to do with Passover. Now, Jesus, of course, we left off some time back where uh, he has launched his ministry. He got water baptized, and we explained why he had to do that. And, and it's interesting to note, too, that Jesus, then even at age 12, we see down here in Luke chapter 2 and verse 40, and the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And then verse 52 of chapter 2 of Luke. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Well, we see here that he came in this world literally as a human being in every respect. Because in the natural he had to grow and develop. But then also spiritually. He grew strong in spirit, or became strong in spirit. Well, if he had come into this world as God, he already would have been strong in spirit. And then also in verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Well, he wouldn't have to increase in wisdom if he came as God. So he did not come as God. He came literally as a human being in every respect. He was God, and according to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8, he left all of his privileges, his, I would say, his godly privileges in heaven, he left all of that in heaven and became a human being just like the rest of us in every way. So he was growing spiritually. Now, there's nothing said then about Jesus from this point on, looks like age 12, all the way up to age 30. So there's 18 years that are unaccounted for as far as the scriptures here are concerned, age 12 all the way up to 30. And uh, But you can rest assured that what he's doing in these 18 years, he's not just laying around doing nothing. Look where he was at age 12. And, and uh, the uh, people, he was sitting in the midst of them, like it says in verse 46 of Luke 2. Then so it was that after three days, they found him, Jesus, in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And so he said then in verse 40, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. And so he was obviously had a good parents, Jewish parents. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written therein. Then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. Well, Jesus is on his way to provide redemption for mankind and to destroy Satan in the process. And so I believe in 18 years, he is not only providing for his family because apparently Joseph died uh, during these years and Jesus then had to provide for his mother and everything and take over his dad's business, I guess he would say. But he also meditated on the word for 18 years and he prepared. And so by the time he turned 30, he already had a clear understanding of who he was, why he was in this world, and had a full grasp of the what we'd call the Abrahamic Covenant or the Old Testament. 
And uh, so he was ready for his ministry. He prepared during those 18 years, I believe, knowing what we know about Jesus, for sure he was preparing for this big day. All right, now Jesus is going to fulfill this Pentecost. Now, in order for God to have, um, in order for God to redeem mankind, he has to have a sacrifice. And it has to be a, it has to be a man, sinless man, and had to be that the blood of a sinless man was the only way that mankind could be redeemed. Now, we had talked quite a bit about Genesis 15 and how God had cut covenant with Abram and uh, God the Son and God the Father were the two that actually walked through those halves. Abram couldn't do it because he, he, uh, God needed someone he could enter into covenant with that ultimately could take on the form of a human being, sin and become the sinless sacrifice. Sinless. Now Abram is not sinless. He's got the nature of sin. So he, he, couldn't, he couldn't walk between those two halves. And so God the Son stood in for him. God the Son being Jesus. And 4,000 years later, uh, uh, here's the cross. I didn't qualify to go to the cross. I had the nature of sin. And so Jesus stood in for mankind. He stood in for me. He stood in for you, just like he did with Abram. Now, God needed to be in covenant with Abram. And so Abram was in covenant with God through Jesus Christ because God needed a physical body. God the Son is a spirit. The Word of God is a spirit. They need physical bodies. And so the physical body came through Abram's loins. And uh, ultimately, Mary provided the physical body for Jesus all right, now, but then remember, as they were cutting the covenant, it seemed like the whole ceremony was interrupted. And in and, and verse 13 and 16 through 16, it's just plucked right in the middle of them cutting the covenant. But then look what he said. It seemed so out of place at the first time I read it years ago. Then he said to Abram, now certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. Well, obviously, he's talking about Egypt. So some, four, some 400 years later, we've got the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. And now it's time for them to be delivered from Egypt. And they would come out with great possessions. But this is also where Passover was launched. Back in Exodus in chapter 12, we see that, uh, of course, uh, Aaron and, uh, and Moses, they had all these plagues that God brought on to Egypt, and he used these two men for that. And finally, when it comes to the 10th plague, the 10th one was the death of the firstborn of all the Egyptian families and all of the cattle and livestock, everything. The firstborn would die that night. And so then... Uh, so they then had to prepare for the Passover. In other words, the angel of death would pass over the homes of all of the children of Israel for those who had blood applied to the doorposts of their homes. And then the, death, angel, the, death, the angel of death would see that blood and then pass over that home and nobody in that home would die. And so uh, they prepared for the Passover. Now what they had to do, now this, this here then, this Exodus 12 that was inserted in this Genesis 15, is God preparing a sacrifice for himself so that he can redeem mankind 4,000 years down the road. So this is the first step. This is the Passover. All right. And Jesus is referred to as the Lamb of God. You know, I come back here to the Gospel of John, and we see uh, John the Baptist speaking. And he says here in John chapter 1 and in verse 29, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And verse 35, or 36 rather, and, and well, verse 35, Again the next day John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. 
So God needed a lamb for himself to offer up as a sinless substitute for all of mankind. So here he's, he's preparing that lamb. So we come to the children of Israel then, about 400 years, I guess, after Genesis 15. And here's how they prepared for the Passover, for that night, in preparation for that night when the angel of death would pass through the land and all the firstborn would die. Now, the Passover lamb that was prepared for the deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt, first of all, the lamb is selected on the 10th day of the month. Oh boy, I see, I see I ran over about a minute in time again. Oh, it goes, it gets, gets too good. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll pick up on the Passover in the next session. Meanwhile, may God's best be yours until we get back again. Amen. <laughs>